Well, welcome. Good afternoon. I'm Rita Brown. I'm the president of Residence Council this year, and I want to welcome you to the third quarter report uh, of Residence Council, and thank you, those of you in attendance. If they're at home watching on TV, they're not seeing anything this morning. <laughs> Before we begin, please stand if you are able and join Vice President Jerry Herod as he leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join us in our pledge to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And just a reminder that this is a report format for time's sake. If you have questions, make a note of them and ask one of the council members afterwards or, or give us a call. For today's agenda, we're going to have introduction of new residents, election of the candidates for the 2023 Residents Council, and Residents Council committee reports. So right, we'll start with recognizing the new residents. And if you're here, if you'll stand and wave so people can, can see you, and I hope you still have your... Uh, I guess it's a navy blue ribbon on so that people can recognize you. All right. Uh, Jane Anderson. Ed and Phyllis Bartle. Patricia Bird. Andy Blau and Joan Lacasia. Richard and Leslie Briggs. Jeff and Barb McConnell. Richard and Edie Norwick. Norick, excuse me. Joe and Susie Rudolph. Yay! All right. Uh, Paul and Polly Steves. Rod and Peggy Whited. All right. Thank you. Yay. And Bonnie Zakotnik. Zakotnik, excuse me. Is Bonnie here? She had an appointment and she was hoping she'd get here in time. But thank you very much. We're glad you're here and hope to get to know, to know you. Residence Council is recognized by the management because of state law by 651. I always get those mixed up. We're, they're elected in September, which is today, and then they take office January 1. And there are 11 members of the council, and there are three officers, the president, and you've met Jerry, the vice president, and our secretary is Ellie Wells at the table, who uh, has been right there all year. Thank goodness for Ellie. You will hear from the committee chairs in a few minutes. However, the next order of business is the election of the new resident council members for 2023. And Tom Harmon, the chair of the nominating committee, will introduce the nominees. Actually, my format is a little bit different because I am going to do my nomination discussion and then we'll do the, uh, uh, introduce the nominees. Is the, is the microphone right in front? Need it up a little bit? How's that? All right. Anyhow, uh, my name is Tom Harmon and I'm the chairman of the nominations committee. And I, at this time, I want to thank the members of the nomination committee who have worked very hard to contact and select six people to become nominees for the year 2023. The members of my committee are Jerry Herod, the resident council vice president, Kathy Summers, resident council representative, and Steve Biederman and Sherry Clark, my members at large. Been very blessed to have such great group of individuals to serve on this committee. The nomination committee presented to resident council in May six nominees for their consideration. The resident council on June 19th unanimously selected the following candidates as nominees on the council beginning January 2023. It is now my pleasure to introduce the nominees for the resident council members. Would you please stand when I call your name? They are Barbara Brown. Taver Cornett, 
Barry Evans, Rick Larkin, Catherine Mitchell, and Jerry Yaris. And I want to thank each one of you for your willingness to serve this important endeavor at John Knox Village. Thank you very much. There are only as many nominated candidates as number of vacancies on the 2023 Council. Therefore, according to Article 1, Section J of the bylaws, I declare that a unanimous ballot has been cast and all the nominated candidates are elected to Residence Council, their terms to start January 1, 2023. Congratulations to all and thank you for your willingness to serve. We will now have the report from the rest of the committees. There are eight committees in Tom's nomination is one, and we have seven others, and we'll start with Kathy Summers, Activities Chair. Thank you, thank you, Rita. Is that good? I'd like, first of all, I'd like to thank the members of the 2022 Activities Committee, our Council Rep, Jerry Altenhoff, Staff Liaison, Candace DiGiovanni, Committee members Leslie Blair, Joan Cornett, Ed Grohl, Dot Hosterman, Rick Larkin, Noel Schomburg, and Deborah Sheffield. The Orange City Elementary School Drive School Food Drive is next week. Food collection dates are Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, September 26th, 28th, and 30th, from 9 to 11 a.m. You can bring your food donations to Audubon, apartment number 111 during any between 9 and 11 on those three days or we're going to have a basket by the um, communications desk which is by the gift shop and you can put your d donations in there if we're not in the room collecting them at the time so anytime between Monday and Friday um, please check expiration dates and please no glass containers we have new bean bags for cornhole there are two sets of boards available for recreational play set up on the Valencia landing pool deck the bags are kept in the cupboard in the bistro closest to the window. There are also dry rags and spray wax available there if you want to wax the boards before you play. The resident art exhibit is available for all to view in the Bay Dining Room. We are looking at moving the next art exhibit to a more central location. We'll keep you updated. Pool school is starting again. Be sure to sign up before it fills up. We had our second successful pickleball clinic this morning. The sport continues to grow in popularity here at John Knox. Candace continues to expand the number of activities and events available to residences. She is planning a Halloween costume party for the end of October. The afternoon teas have been very successful and will continue. And karaoke is going to be a week from tomorrow in the Treetop Lounge. The, the um, resident services is also looking for suggestions for the Saturday night movies. So if you have ideas, if there's any movie you'd like to see, please either email Resident Services or Candace or myself and let us know and we'll make sure it gets passed on. The Activities Committee and Resident Services are looking into a volunteer expo where you would be able to explore different ways to volunteer your time, either on or off campus. They are also looking into some sort of volunteer recognition event. We will keep you updated on that, please and please report your volunteer hours in the book by Resident Services. Next, Jerry Herod will be giving the report for the Communications Committee. Thank you. I will try to uh, fill in for uh, Pam Gregg, who is uh, having a problem with her voice. And uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce the members of the uh, Communications Committee. It's uh, Debbie Articlier, who is... Uh, Don Dox TV, Bob Dunham on photography, Barbara Brown, who is a Village Weekly, Sandy Etchison, who is in charge of uh, Village Friends, Luis Kakamich, who is in charge of the Village Life, 
and she's also the chair of the uh, library committee. Miles Hardy, J.B. Portal, and Shannon Finley is the staff liaison. Centrix users will have three Knox TV channels. Each channel will have specific content. Channel three will show community interest slides. Channel four will offer movies and pre-recorded programs. And channel five will air live broadcasts. Residents who no longer have Knox TV may still view community programs like Joe's Chats, Therapy Talks, Coffee With, Presentations, Resident Performances, Quarterly Reports like this one. These programs are available on John Knox's YouTube channel. The programs will not be live streamed, but will be recordings. The recordings will be available on YouTube within 48 hours of live taping, meaning this program right here will be about 48 hours from now that you can watch it. You can access your YouTube channel from the portal, click the resources, click on the resources tab, then click on important links in the drop down menu, then click on JKV YouTube page. The portal. The portal liaison team welcome their newest member, resident Andy Blau. Andy brings a wealth of IT experience to the team. When he had a real job, that's what he was doing, so he should fill in quite well. If you need help with the portal, list of portal liaisons is found under the Help tab. The option for residents to self-cancel their event registrations will not be returning. It was determined that the added option of this portal was cost prohibitive. Residents wanting to cancel the event registrations will continue to have to contact resident services. The library. The library hosted two events this quarter. A library open house and a guest speaker from the Volusia County Library. Both events were well attended. The quarterly, the number of books in the library collection, this quarter the number of books in the library collection, reached a new record of, believe this or not, 4,000 books. A resident donated a desktop video magnifier to the library. The magnifier may be of help to those residents who need larger print. It is located beside the desk. On the right-hand side as you go into the desk, it is right there. The Books on Wheels program, which takes library books to residents living in the apartments, is now operating twice a month. The 2023 library budget was approved. From time to time, the library is in need of volunteers. And if you are interested, contact Luis Cacamis. Knowing what you like and what you would like to see improved is vital to our effectiveness. Please continue to send us your feedback and suggestions. Thank you. And our next speaker is Mike Marks, Chairman of the Employee Appreciation Fund. Mike. Good afternoon. Mike Marks, uh, Employee Appreciation Fund. I've got a, just a couple things to go over with uh, everybody. The Cornhole Tournament's coming up starting October 7th. The sign up is uh, going well. Uh, at 9, 9.30, and 10 are well received. At 10.30, 10 o'clock uh, is lacking about uh, 15 or 16 uh, slots. They're open. So uh, all of you beginners, if you if you're wondering whether you really wanted to participate, if you get in the 10 o'clock uh, slot, you're not competing against anybody except all the newcomers. Uh, so uh, you got a chance to get to the quarterfinals uh, easier than most uh, everybody else. So I want all the beginners to sign up. The tailgate for the finals 
uh, October 21st, it will be at 4 p.m. That's going to be announced in this uh, week, this uh, weekly, this week, and uh, all the details will be in the weekly for the tailgate on the 21st. Another note for the volunteers to help out at the Cornell tournament, you are also eligible to sign up to play. There's no reason you can't do both. And uh, 10 o'clock is open. <laughs> you can do both. Next thing is thankful cards. I want to applaud all the residents. It has been magnificent. We've passed out over 1,000 cards. And the whole back wall will be uh, full of cards. And the employees just love them. And uh, it, it's, it, it's really easy doing a job like this when everybody pitches in the way that everybody is pitched in. Uh, we'll, con we'll continue to produce cards if people want them. So uh, we, we like the effort. We just want to make sure everybody turns in those cards filled out. So uh, give us a couple weeks in front of the Employee Appreciation Day would be wonderful, so we aren't clobbered with them at the, at the last minute. Last thing I want to go over is the Employee Appreciation Fund. I really only have two messages. One is we've collected $97,524.59. Our goal is $380,000. But we've done that every year. Everybody gives what they can give, and they time it to, at the end. And so we're confident that we're going to meet the goal of $380,000. Uh, I just add the one reminder. Everybody's been uh, hit by the inflation and, and I think everybody can understand that uh, our, our low-wage employees are hit the worst by inflation. So just keep that in mind when you give us your last-minute checks, which I'm assured are coming. <laughs> Thank you. Jerry? Thank you, Mike. Greetings, friends and neighbors. Jerry Altenhoff here, reporting on the workings of the Facilities Committee over the past three months. The committee consists of Council Representative Pam Gregg, with committee members Greg Pikula, Bill Sharp, Lonnie Ricks, Mary Lee Sharp, and Kathy Summers. Our staff liaison is Mark Otto a fine, fine gentleman and a great manager. I'll begin with his report regarding the maintenance department, which I'm sure you have all appreciated. Their help is only a phone call away or a portal report. In addition to supervising the completion of phase one units on Valencia Landing so that residents could begin moving in there, he also had to deal with roof replacements. But I think his biggest headache must have been the installation of Centrix. I feel your pain. <laughs> but he reported that our three in-house trained technicians have been able to solve 95% of the issues as they arose. The long-awaited garden shed has been installed. I hope you're hearing how very busy Mark Otto is as he serves our community. He deserves your praise and thanks. The Transportation Department has been busy this quarter, driving 31,132 miles on 4,986 trips, both in and out of the village. Call them, and they'll take you where you want to go with a, within a reasonable distance. 
I think Texas may be out of the question. The security department reported completing 203 responses in the past quarter. Their average response time for us to get help, three and a half minutes. I think that's applause worthy. Kevin Culligan and his ground crew have been busy trimming trees and planting some replacements. Kevin is working closely now with an arborist from uh, UCF to help detect diseased and decaying trees in our community. He also tells us that the pond will be sprayed for weeds and algae. We welcomed Brian Schumann as a new housekeeping manager this quarter. I'm sure you're waiting now for the undies report. The laundry completed a whopping 130,600 pounds of stuff. Greg Paikuda, Mr. Hobby Shop, reported 91 jobs completed in the hobby shop. These volunteers can fix all kinds of things. Uh, the hobby shop will appreciate donations for their efforts, some of which, some or all of which will go to the employee assistance fund. Lonnie Ricks, our long-serving recycling chairman, reported that he welcomed two new volunteers this quarter, but he still could use more help. Please consider volunteering for this worthwhile activity. Once a week, you will get your morning walk in while doing community service. Sort of a twofer, so to speak. Based on your comment cards, I find you are very appreciative of the help you receive from the facilities committee. One card recommended that we have yearly replacement of batteries in our smoke alarms. That is now being looked into. So we do hear you. So please keep those comment cards coming. Next up is the money man, Tony Ardeglare. Tony. I'm Tony Ardeglare, chair of the finance committee. Let's start with our committee membership, including Ken Falter, our council rep, and committee members Chuck Ashley, Linda Som, Bill Ellis, Walt Scanzi, Bill Mahar, and Jerry Aris. Our staff liaison is Cynthia Pohl, chief financial officer. Before I get to the numbers, I'd like to talk about inflation. We all know what inflation is when you're paying $8 a pound for bacon or $5 a pound for butter. But what causes inflation? Despite what some residents might tell you, it's not caused by Mr. Trainer. <laughs> so let's not blame him. According to the Federal Reserve, inflation is caused when the money supply grows faster than the economy's ability to produce goods and services. Stated another way, if people are getting free money, there's no incentive for them to go to work to produce those goods and services. With fewer goods available, people are willing to pay more for items that they can get. Now, how did we get too much money in the economy? I can answer that in one word, trillion. Politicians in the media talk about a trillion dollars as if it were a concept that people can grasp. The only way I can start to understand a trillion is by using the smallest measure that I can think of. One second of time. It's an instant, it goes by in a flash. There are about 11 days in a million seconds. Anyone know how many days in a billion seconds? If you're thinking 32 years, you'd be correct. Any guess for a trillion seconds? 32,000 years. So I'd like you to keep in mind what inflation is, what causes it, 
and why we need an increase in our monthly fees for next year. Enough talk of economics. This quarter, the committee reviewed the first quarterly report to the Office of Insurance Regulation, which has information as of March 31st. The big two of our financials are, of course, the balance sheet and the statement of operations. The balance sheet simply tells us how much we have and how much we owe. In accounting terms, assets minus liabilities equals net worth, exactly the same type of information you put together in January for the ad valorem exercise to figure out your own net worth. The balance sheet shows that as of March 31st, we had a net worth of $126 million, with an increase of $17 million compared with the same period last year. Assets were $181 million, with investments and property and equipment count accounting for about 81% of the total. Liabilities remained at $55 million, with deferred revenue from entrance fees and refundable entrance fees accounting for almost 95% of our liabilities. Deferred revenue is the money John Knox sets aside to take care of us in the future, and the 17 million is the share of entrance fees that John Knox must hold on to in case we leave before we've been here four years. The statement of operations is equivalent to your checkbook, which shows how much we took in and how much we spent. We took in 8.3 million, mostly from healthcare fees and monthly fees. We had liabilities of 9.3 million, with the two largest categories being healthcare operations and depreciation. If we subtract expenses from revenues, we find that we had a loss of $1 million for the quarter. Let's take a closer look at that. Our expenses were about the same as in 2021, but revenue was about $3 million lower. This is primarily because the value of our investment portfolio fell by 4.7%. Now, we didn't actually lose this money, but on paper, our investments were $2.5 million less. So it's not time to panic. When the market rebounds, which it always has, we should be in the black again. Let's turn to the three measures the state of Florida has been requiring from CCRCs to make sure they won't go bankrupt. It seems that the state is rethinking two of those measures, days cash on hand and debt service coverage ratio. And while they're thinking about it, we don't have to report on it. The final measure is the one many people consider the most important, and it's the one that Mr. Trainer covers in every one of his monthly chats, occupancy. If we think of this as income, which it really is, obviously the higher the number, the better. The target is 80%, and at 86%, we exceed the target. Up next, Wayne Ash to talk about food. Thank you, Tony. Um, some of you may be glad to hear I forgot my notes. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm chairman of the food committee, and uh, as you see behind me on the screen are the members of the food committee. Uh, our council representative is Tom Harmon. The committee members are Joanne Gerhardt, uh, Jerry Hazley, Claudia Graham, Marilyn Mayo, Fred Hagman, Mark Miser, and Karen Yaris. Our staff liaisons are Stan, Dem, and Raven. And they attend all of our meetings and are very helpful uh, to the food committee. Based on your comments, which we get directly and we read them all, the new menu, uh, menu changes that became effective September the 13th at the Bay and Grill dining rooms have been very successful. Would you join me now with a round of applause for the food service staff 
and the job well done. Uh, once the staff is fully trained on the new menus, um, a new menu will also be forthcoming for the Crane's dining room. The plan is to change these menus every six to eight weeks. The food service management has asked the food committee to suggest future menu changes as well as entrees. And if your suggestions would be appreciated along those lines too. If you have ideas for a new menu theme or new entrees, please contact a member of the food committee for me. We continue to have unreliable food supplies as well as a challenge in the labor market. Um, this continues to be a problem for food services. Some employees are students, obviously, and they've returned to school. Therefore, they have reduced their availability for work hours, which adds to the problem. With the holiday season fast approaching, there will be many extra parties as well as dinners to accommodate residents who request these things. So for that reason, uh, we're gonna discontinue the wine tasting event for the remainder of the year in order to relieve some of the workload for the food service sta uh, staff. Food service on average does about a little less than 20,000 meals a month. They welcome all of your comments, both positive and negative, as well as suggestions for, as I mentioned earlier, new entrees or different themes pertaining to our food service. We would like to say that Overall, I think the food service has done a very good job under some trying circumstances for this year. Um, I have noticed that the new employees that have been hired for service um, are doing an excellent job, and I think the selection has been very good. Currently, though, we have no applicants uh, for replacements. Um, I think that we all appreciate the work that's put in to provide us food, and when you think of it, as mentioned earlier, the comments can reveal that, as well as the new cards for complimenting individual employees. Thank you very much. Our next presenter is Ken with the Health Committee. Thank you, Wayne. I'm Ken Falter, Health Committee Chair for this year. My committee members are Mike Marks, who serves as Vice Chair, six resident members, Barbara Brown, Joyce Monaco, Ellen Klein, Mary Ellen Humphreys, Bev Schleck, and our newest member, Satar Sheff. Our staff liaison is Nicole Vega, Director of Clinical Services. Our scope of operations covers the five John Knox healthcare departments, which involve nine different functions. As you can see from the list, there are three different things, areas going on in Majestic Oaks and Oak Park, and we interact with each of them, as well as the fitness center, home health, and assisted living. Our committee has a set of goals Three of them include the following. Keep the resident council apprised of health care concerns and information of interest to all John Knox residents. Recommend ideas, initiatives, and activities via the residents council for consideration by management on behalf of the residents. 
Third, communicate timely and helpful information to the residents via the Village Weekly, the portal, Village Life magazine, presentations, workshops, and printed resources. Now for the past several months, we've been developing a project with fo which falls under these goals. We're gonna have a new lady in town. Her name is Lily. L-I-L-I, -L -I, late in life issues, but we'll call her Lily. Mary Ellen Humphreys is the project leader. Mary Ellen, stand up. <laughs> the aim of Lily is to identify issues of most concern to our residents and to provide timely information and assistance to help prepare for those issues that we are even encountering now or may soon be encountering. Because after all, we're all getting later in life. With the assistance of an advisory committee of six residents, we've identified several general areas of concern. Estate planning, these are in no particular order of importance yet, <coughs> but you, you can see them there. What we need to know first is which of these areas are most of you interested in learning about, getting assistance in dealing with, etc. So our plan is to put out a short survey that will be made available on both the computerized survey program and in paper, hopefully in the next several weeks. We will use this to determine which of these areas of those six are of most concern and interest to you and we will develop our programs to start with them. We'll bring speakers in to talk about what you need to know and be aware of. And then I foresee having workshops to help you get your ideas and thoughts organized, to help you get ready to deal with these issues, and to help prepare you to deal with those professionals that can help you get your things into the proper form and the proper legal format, et cetera, for the state of Florida. Let me caution, however, what Lily is not. Lily is not a legal elder care, guardian, or financial service. We are not professionals. We are not going to sit down and finalize whatever you need to do. Our hope is to get you started get you into the process, and then you will work with your own selection of professionals to finalize it. Watch for further information in the Village Weekly. And last, the short commercial. The end of the year is approaching, along with late in life, and uh, there's always some turnover in the various committees at the end of the year. I know I'm going to lose at least one member because y'all elected her to the resident council for next year. <laughs> and so uh, I'm always interested in people who may want to consider being involved with the health care committee next year. You can contact me anytime and we can sit and chat. And now I'll turn the podium back to our council president, Rita Brown. You can see that the committees and the committee chair are very busy all year long working on your behalf. The, assign, uh, the assignments, our vice president will be, uh, hello, are you there? <laughs> our vice president will be determining the, uh, uh, you, you need to turn that up. Can you hear me all right? You might have turned me off while I was sitting down there. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, our Vice President, Jerry Herod, will be working with, his, uh, with the new council members and the ones that are returning and making assignments uh, for the different committees. And like Ken said, uh, there will be some turnover. The official term of a committee member ends on December 31st. 
there is no rule about not being able to return to it. But it, uh, we had found in past years that people were on there like 10 years and we needed new blood. So officially the committee ends at, at December 31st. So if you're interested in one of the committees in volunteering, contact the current chairman and they can make a note of your name and pass it on to the, to the new one if they're, if they're not gonna be the chair next year. If you want more information about Residence Council, go to the portal and they read, uh, the title has changed a little bit. Go under Resources, Resident Organization Documents, and there you can find the organizational chart, standing rules, the mission statements, and uh, members of the committee, and just anything you want to know. And like the, many of the chairmen have said, your comments are very important, your comment submissions. The portal is the best way to do it because it goes immediately to everyone, but any way you want to do it. And reminder for about the cornhole tournament. If, even if you don't play, come and watch and, and cheer on your fellow residents. Uh, we had a lot of fun last year. And uh, also that'll show your support for the, to the fund that we, the Boy Appreciation Fund. And something to remember, if you're a couple, you are two people you're not one donation. You're two people getting services, so uh, double whatever you thought you were going to give so that our employees uh, can realize that they're appreciated. Uh, the management re quarterly report, that's information I know you all are waiting to hear, will follow shortly, so uh, stretch and then stay around. It'll, they'll begin at uh, 3.30. Thank you and have a great week.